Kim, what's on your radar? Novak Djokovic, the world's number one men's tennis player, arrived in Melbourne to defend his title in the Australian Open, only to have his entry into the country denied. Instead, he found himself stuck in a guarded room at the airport for hours while his lawyers attempted to swiftly appeal the decision. He's since been moved to a guarded hotel where Australia detains asylum seekers and refugees, in some cases for years. Novak will remain at the guarded hotel in isolation until at least Monday when the court resumes considering his appeal. The problem? The Australian government claims it's a visa issue, but the truth is it's likely a political one. They say Novak didn't have the correct reason for a visa that allows for the medical exemption he was granted upon arriving into the country. Australia requires proof of vaccination to enter the country, and in November, the Australia Open announced that every player must be vaccinated to compete as well. This is on top of the country's vaccine requirements. So even if a person has an exemption from the Australian government to travel into the nation, they'd still need to also seek an exemption from the tournament and vice versa. And apparently a person still needs to get a special medical exemption visa as well. So Novak is believed to be unvaccinated. However, he does have natural immunity after contracting the virus in June of 2020. But unlike Europe, where Novak lives, Australia doesn't recognize natural immunity. He did, however, get the medical exemptions from the tournament and from the Victoria government. But when news broke that unvaccinated Novak Djokovic was given an exemption that would allow him to compete, there was a lot of public outcry. People were pissed off, thinking Novak received special treatment, which is why it's suspect that suddenly upon arrival, Novak was treated the way he was. The public maybe wouldn't have been so upset if it were another player. And there are other players who, all, who also received the same exemptions who are in the country now. Novak was one of a few. But Novak has been very outspoken against lockdowns and vaccine mandates, which makes him kind of a COVID villain. Plus, he's always been a little bit of a tennis villain for being hot-headed and not as charming as his counterparts like Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. Djokovic is someone people hate, and him getting an exemption stirred up a lot more of that hatred. Even though it makes no scientific sense, Novak has natural immunity. He could test negative and quarantine. The vaccines aren't stopping the spread. But in fact, vaccinated Nadal just contracted COVID last month. None Nonetheless, people in the public would rather unvaccinated Djokovic stay out of the country. But players in the tennis world might not be so thrilled with his, with his absence. Novak is the number one player in the world, and I might get in trouble for saying this, but he's arguably the best player to have ever played the sport. He's currently tied with Federer and Nadal for the most Grand Slam wins ever. They're in a three-way tie at 20 Grand Slams each. But Federer is currently sitting out injured, is nearing retirement, and may never see another win. And Nadal has had many injuries injuries, which has kept him out of the top five for quite some time. But despite the tie, Novak has better overall stats and he's younger. Love him or hate him. He literally, looking at the stats, is the best male tennis player ever at the moment. His appearance at this Australian Open would be to defend his title in a tournament he has won for the past three years in a row. If he wins, he also breaks the tie and becomes the male player with the most Grand Slam singles titles in the Open era. He's the guy to beat. And if he doesn't play, the guy who does end up getting the title will forever have that win tainted with the asterisk that he maybe only won because he didn't have to face Djokovic because Djokovic was discriminated against and turned away at the border. What a bummer. Some important details to cover in this story. The medical boards that gave Djokovic the exemptions were accused of playing favorites. However, they insist the boards reviewed over two dozen exemptions blind, meaning the names of the players were blocked from the panel when they were going through each case. But the public doesn't buy it. They think he was given special treatment because he's the number one player or because he's rich. Him being detained, humiliated, and turned away at the border seems like the politicians just trying to quell the public's accusations. Now, Australia has 91.5% of everyone over 16 vaccinated, yet the virus is surging across the nation. The country was attempting a zero COVID policy and as a result enacted some of the harshest, most authoritarian and barbaric restrictions in the world. Australian citizens couldn't fly in or out of their own country very easily. Some provinces didn't allow their own residents to go home, causing encampments to pop up along borders. People couldn't be out of their homes for more than a couple of hours a day, nor travel more than three miles from their home. People have been carted off to quarantine camps and unmasked people have been beaten down by the police. It's been very bizarre watching what's been going on in Australia, but they insist it's working. They survived the worst strains of the pandemic with few casualties. 
but the price they've paid, a massive reduction in their freedoms, has been hefty. And in the end, COVID spreads anyway. Delta dashed those zero COVID hopes, and Omicron is ripping whatever hope was left to shreds. But it's true, Australians have sacrificed a lot of their freedom attempting to stop the virus. And now the thought of outsiders coming in under more relaxed rules is upsetting. And I can't say I blame them. I would be upset also. I have been upset seeing, for example, Gavin Newsom dine at a fancy restaurant for a birthday party after telling all of us we had to cancel Thanksgiving. It's upsetting. So that being said, I think all of this just sucks. Probably Djokovic shouldn't play in the tournament because it does feel unfair to the Australian people living under such harsh restrictions. The player who does end up winning the Australian Open probably won't really be able to celebrate or reap the rewards from that win, which really sucks for that guy. And it sucks for Djokovic, who is the best in the world and on the cusp of making tennis history, yet is being discriminated against for no real scientific reason. But mostly it sucks for the people in Australia who've lived under such harsh authoritarian restrictions under the illusion they could stop COVID. They didn't. They're miserable, and it sounds like they want others to be miserable, too. So Novak, just uh, like I mentioned, is stuck in a, in a hotel, a guarded hotel, where they keep asylum seekers. They've actually kept a couple of teenagers that arrived in the country at the age of 15. They're not, like now in their 20s, and they've been stuck in this hotel for years. Um, and so Novak is there. Of course, he's not seeking asylum or a refugee of any sort, so he could voluntarily leave the country. But he is trying to stick around because he's, he's looking to make tennis history. But, you know, this just kind of shows, I think, some of the um, just kind of the illogic of all of this. I don't think this is making Australia look good. I don't think this is making, you know, I, I mean, Novak sought the exempt exemptions. He didn't just show up and expect anything. He was granted the exe the exemptions for them to then treat him this way. Why couldn't they have told him, look, we're going to deny you before he even got on the plane? Um, you know, all of that just seems right. I don't and, know, this is and, the, and the context for this is Australia has culturally this this ex extreme and intense pride in its ability to keep diseases off its island. You know, there are a bunch of diseases that are endemic in the rest of the world that have never made it onto Australia, and that's because they have this like extraordinarily tough kind of custom system. Anybody who's ever because traveled there. Because what happened there, with the rabbits. Ra yes, and like you can't bring a, you know, to bring a dog there is like a six month yeah. plus process. And so when COVID kicked in, you know, they, they probably have gone probably more extreme than anybody else. And, and, and you know, the, the dystopian things that, that they're having their own population do are, have, are, are quite wild. I, have, I mean, I have a lot of sympathy for a professional athlete who has had COVID and so, ha, you know, has some level of national immunity uh, and, is, and is nervous about what the vaccine will do, uh, you know, to their professional career. That's everything, you know, that is, that's everything for them. It's not just their professional career, it's their identity. It's, it's, it's absolutely everything. And combined with the fact that he had COVID already, that, you know, which works for him back in his home country, it, it feels like if he got the exemptions, uh, that, they should, that, that they should allow that. And also, it's not that like he's playing rugby. You know, tennis right. is a sport where you can socially distance. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. He's very far away from the other players. Um, you know, it, it's and also in watching all of the tennis news, I, I follow a lot of tennis and watching a lot of the tennis news. Uh, a lot of the commentators believe that this is, you know, Novak is not a well liked player. He is hmm. he is a villain in tennis. Naturally, he's, he doesn't have a good personality. People resent the fact that he's the best player in the world. And now, like I said, the stats, the best to have ever played the game. I, like I said, people get mad because they don't like him. But it's just the way it is. You know, I mean, uh, and, and I will mention that there are a lot of players who have not been playing the game. A lot of the biggest names in the sport have sat out of every single tournament since vaccinations have been released and have been required at a lot of tournaments. Now, they're claiming a lot of those other athletes say they're injured, but they're absent. They are absent and they have been absent. Um, and especially a lot, of, a lot of the top female players are absent. Um, several of the top male players, the top 10 male players, though, were all expected to show up to show up to this tournament. Uh, Novak being number one. But again, that really sucks for the guy who wins. Right. If Novak can't compete, do you want to win that trophy? Would you want to be the guy that wins? And then you're like, well, but it's because they didn't let Novak come in and mm. play. I mean, what what Australia, too, has gone through is just I can't even fathom living there and going through that. Uh, I've, yeah. I've thought our restrictions here have been far too insane, far too heavy handed. And this is, you know, that times a thousand. So it's just well, and, 
I, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really, really insane. I have a friend that just who is Australian moved back to Australia recent. What well, kind of lives b- between L.A. and Australia. And so he's lived under the L.A. restrictions, which are some of the strictest in the uni- in the U.S. Right. We're under very strict restrictions here. And then he goes and he's in Australia now. And he was saying to me that, you know, just having his mask off for a moment, the, the cops come up and tap him oh on the shoulder God. and say, mask up yeah i mean it's you know here it's my hell it's my hell yeah i mean here in la if you if you take off your mask and you don't wear it people around you you know maybe somebody at the restaurant or, or you know if you go into a coffee shop might say can you please wear your mask you're not going to see cops coming up to you you we know unless somebody here, calls right? right we police ourselves unless somebody calls the police i suppose and then maybe the police will show up and, and handle it but in australia they're just like patrolling around looking for you any random person wants to tell me, put on a mask, should think otherwise from here on out. Yeah, just, just so we'll see what happens with Novak. I mean, well, you know, I'm sure there'll be updates. Um, they say they're going to, he has to sit in that hotel till Monday and wait, wait it out and see if they're going to honor the exemption he was given by the Tennis um, Association and also by the Victorian government. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. We shall see. Well, we will have more rising in just a minute. Stay with us.